My first love was outer space because uh, we didn't, I didn't grow up in a religious household. Um, we went golfing on Sunday mornings, or alternatively, uh, we would tape Star Trek the night before on Saturday nights, and on Sunday morning, we would watch you know, the recorded Star Trek. Uh, so I grew up totally loving Star Trek and Star Wars and that sort of thing. Um, I went to space camp a couple times. When I was 11, my parents put me on a Greyhound bus down to space camp seeking out new life and new civilizations and going where no one has gone before. That's what I wanted to do. So I thought, you know, okay, I'm, I love science. I need to either become an engineer or a physician because that's what you do if you're smart and good at science. And then when uh, I was in university, I started seeing what real scientists do, what PhD scientists do. And I had the opportunity to do a summer research project studying virology, HIV, um, and another virus that frequently goes along with HIV, uh, Kaposi's sarcoma associated virus. Um, and I absolutely fell in love with viruses. Like I found my aliens here on earth. I study HIV and I study the evolutionary fitness of HIV um, because when an individual is infected with HIV, you know, you hear some people progress relatively quickly and some people it seems like they live forever and, and uh, the virus doesn't really affect them. And we'd really like to understand why and how that happens. And it turns out that uh, more fit viruses, more evolutionarily um, advantageous viruses are in individuals that progress more quickly. And so our idea is, you know, HIV changes so much that we can't figure out a good vaccine for it. There, there are too many possibilities. But if we can figure out what the more aggressive, the more evolutionary fit viruses look like, then maybe we could make, uh, it's called a therapeutic vaccine. We could vaccinate against the more aggressive variants so they could never evolve in a patient and we could turn every HIV patient into these uh, non-progressing uh, versions. We have made uh, many advances in terms of antiretroviral therapy. So there's lots of drugs we can give individuals now uh, to the point where an individual infected with HIV in the West can live a, a, their lifespans are approaching those of individuals who are uninfected. Um, if you have access to drugs, it's not that big of a deal, um, as opposed to the way it was in you know 1985. The hurdle we are approaching now is you know getting those drugs to everyone who needs them, um, and of course HIV evolves resistance to these drugs, and so uh, the way we can really save everyone is with an HIV vaccine. And so far, that has completely eluded us. When HIV was first identified, the scientists were like, oh, this is just a virus, give us six months, we'll make a vaccine. We know how to make vaccines. And here we are 30 years later, and, and we still don't have it. Um, so HIV really has proven to be an evolutionary powerhouse that really shows us that evolution is smarter than we are.